Maddie took me up on my invitation to join me in the studio. Please take a seat. Hello and welcome back. I'm Clive from Clive's Art. For those people that uh, know who I am and have subscribed, thank you very much. Don't forget to leave me that thumbs up. That's most important because that's how I get recognised and that's how I can improve and keep making these free, yes, free lessons just for you. Now that's the most important thing and it makes me very happy when I've been getting all these lovely comments. Now, one of the things that I've been asked for is depth perception. Ooh, that's a big word, depth perception. What I mean is, how can we make a painting look as if it's going in in, in, in depth, basically? You know, we get that, that a feeling of depth perception. Um, now, we've talked about um, one point perspective and all this type of stuff and vanishing points. You need to check a link. Um, I'll, I'll put one just below you if you have a look under that the lesson will be there um, hopefully if I can if I know how to do it you may be able to press a button by here somewhere and that will take you to that video but yeah anyway the links below so that's that's good to go and watch that but um, I'm gonna start off with to show you how to make just a basic let's start with a sky and a lake or a sea, whatever. There's no detail in this particular lesson whatsoever, but I can show you how to get that um, optical illusion, because that's all painting is, an optical illusion of depth in the painting. So um, this is what you're going to need. Um, I'm going to use a slightly bigger canvas this time because it's just easier to paint on a larger scale and they give you a little bit more um, idea of how things work. Now I really do suggest, and I tell my students this, that a canvas panel is much better for you to paint on, especially when you're beginning, than the canvas um, itself. You know, when you've, got a, when you've got a normal canvas such as this, you've got, you, it's a little bit more difficult for you to paint on. Um, reason is absorption rate of the paint, evaporation, it, it, it does get a little bit complicated as far as I'm concerned and I try not to make things complicated. So what I suggest you do is this, when you're practicing, buy a board, okay, and say a couple of boards, a couple of different sizes and keep these specifically for practice um, because it, it does help. Unless you want to turn that practice painting into a painting, and obviously that's different. But I've always got practice canvases here, and this is not just solely for the use of YouTube. I actually do practice myself, yes, because in order for me to pass my knowledge on to you, that means I've got to get better. So it, it works for me and it works for you, and that's 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 cool because I'm 51 years old and I'm I'm always learning these new tricks. I've got something stuck in my ear, sorry. Anyway. So what I suggest you do is go and buy, this is an 18 by 14 inch canvas panel board. Um, but they, they do come in different sizes, but I like, I like this particular um, panel because 18 by 14, it's not too big, it's not too cumbersome, it's something you can stick down by the side of the, uh, the table or you, you, you can find somebody to store this one quite easily and this is what I use all my practices on. Um, but it's got to a point now that I've decided to turn this into a painting. So um, you never throw anything away. So let's just reuse and uh, let's see what we can do with it. Okay, so looking at our canvas um, panel, we can either have it landscape, which is long ways that way, for those people that don't know. And there are some people that don't know. Um, or we can have it portrait, which is that way. Um, normally called portrait because that's the way most portraits are painted in that upright position so um, there we go, we don't need to revisit that one again do we? No. As you can see it's quite an old board I've done numerous things with this um, it doesn't matter about me touching that I know I told you not to do that because of grease spots but I've got to prep this anyway so um, right what I'm going to do now I'm going to take you to my mixing bench and I'm going to show you um, the paints and the brushes that I'm going to use in this particular um, tutorial 
Um, so don't forget to get this board and prime it like we've um, mentioned in the previous videos. It's got to have a minimum of three coats of gesso. Any surface you paint on has got to be primed correctly. Check out my links below. It should be in the hints and tips, I think. Um, but yeah, just have a little browse around on my playlist and you'll find it. It says how to prep a canvas correctly. That's the one you want to watch. So um, let's get the mixing bench. And we are here. Yes, this is the business end of my studio. This is where I'll mix all my paints and I get everything prepared. My brushes are stored here. So um, yeah, it's good to be organised and I'm very old. I get a bit of OCD with about as far as my brushes and everything are concerned. I spent three hours the other day sorting all my brushes out in the sizes. I gosh, I got too much time on my hand. I really have. Anyway, you shouldn't. You wouldn't have thought that with all these videos I'm making, but ooh, there we go. Let's start with the paint. So, not a colour exactly, but something we should always have in the drawer, and that's some titanium white. Now, this is a titanium white uh, made by Galleria. Um, I'm not promoting anything because I don't get paid for that so these are the, just the paints I've got in stock so I'm not promoting any particular brand you buy whatever paint you feel is best for you okay but I do recommend something like no smaller than a 60 milliliter tube which is what that is there okay when, when it's opened up obviously you can you want a tube about that size basically okay um, so titanium white now, moving on to, I got two different types of blue because that's all we're going to use. Blue. How can I get depth with blue? I will show you shortly. Um, I got a Cerulean blue. Now, you don't have to go and buy Pacific blue. Just whiten up some blue, okay, with a little bit of white. Just ch change its value a touch. But I got some Cerulean blue. Um, because I just want that tonal change as far as that's concerned. Now, don't worry about the size of the tube. This is 120 mil, um, but I, if you've only got 60 mil, it makes a difference. You don't, you're not going to use a lot of this paint. I can tr trust me. Um, again, a Galleria, but I just happen to like that brand. But um, there you go. And um, I'm also going to use some ultramarine blue. Um, I like ultramarine blue. It's it's got a lovely colour to it. So um, yeah. There we go, some ultramarine blue. Uh, I've got some, we're going to need, I think, some black. And um, my personal preference is Mars Black. Now, this is artist acrylic. This is very expensive paint, so don't go wasting your money on this if you're just a beginner or even an intermediate. And especially when you're practicing, you don't want to use this. It's very expensive stuff. but. I got some in gallery a surprise yes I do like that brand anyway uh, if there's anybody from gallery um, interested in me promoting your products on this YouTube channel please let me know and I shall do my best for you there's no I'm in trying is it right and um, gallery gesso yes we need some gesso this is white gesso and as you know I always put my gesso in a squeezy bottle it goes like that and you can judge how much you want instead of trying to pour it out of these stupid containers which are in um, my eyes too big yes or give us a lip or something on there so we can pour it out if anybody from gallery is listening please make note yes very difficult to dispense paint from these pots enough of that let's get these up I am de -dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum. Right, so gesso in a container such as that. Oop. Just put a little bit in at a time so you don't have any waste. That's the most important thing. Let's get three coats of gesso on this board and then we'll have a look at what we can do with depth and show you how it works with those just those couple of colours. Oh no! Guess what I forgot? <laughs> We need to talk about the brushes. Yes, I only went ahead and started painting that then, but um, yeah, without mentioning the brushes. Well, joking aside, all we need is a one inch flat. One inch flat doesn't have to be this uh, that 
size as long as it's a one inch flat and a three quarter inch flat. That's all the brushes we're going to use. Two brushes and we'll make a painting out of it. Or well, a part of a painting, we'll get the sky and the sea or a lake or whatever it is that we decide to paint in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get some gesso on this canvas. Right, so we've done the gesso and we need to put a horizon line in. And the canvas is 18 inches in height um, and because we're doing it in portrait so we need to mark halfway which is 9 inches. Now I'm using a watercolour pencil as you know because it dissolves with the paint and doesn't need any paint lines. Pencil lines I should say. Um, we just need to draw the horizon across there. So there's the horizon line that we've mentioned this in previous episodes. Um, that's where the sky meets the land, as the, it's called an horizon line. Now, there are vanishing points that go into this in particular points, one point, two point, three point, four point perspectives, but we're not going to cover that in this one, so you need to check out the perspective tutorial. It'll just give you a little bit of an insight. Uh, I don't go into depth, but I just give you a rough idea. So. Um, it's time to put some paint on the board, yes. Smile when your heart is aching Smile even though it's breaking Oh hello, you just caught me doing a little bit of singing because I like singing sometimes. It helps me relax, yes it does. So, I'm at the palette. I'm just going to put my blues and everything that we've discussed and um, just in case you're wondering why I've got another t-shirt on, it's because this is the second day and um, I ran out of time the other night to continue with the, with the um, videoing, so um, here we are. Join me at the easel, I'll be with you in just a sec. There we are, so that's all done. Now, this is the um, um, canvas that I've just mentioned. Um, now, there's two ways you can do this. If you get some um, now we've drawn the um, horizon line there. You can get some masking tape if you so wish. This is what you would do, I suppose, if you wanted to leave one part. One colour. and So you, you can just get that on there. You can get a nice straight horizon line if that's what you want to do. So we'll do that just to show you how it works. So we make sure that's rub there. Now I'm going to concentrate on the sky area first. So we'll get a little bit of kitchen roll. Our trusty friend, that's always handy. And um, we've got our brush. Now these have been pre-soaking in water. Now why do I pre-soak my brushes? Well, when you go into the paint, as I've mentioned before, it doesn't, if it's dry, it will go and suck it up like a sponge. And so if you pre-soak your brushes, it, that, that doesn't happen because they're pre-soaked. So it, it's not going to absorb the paint so much and it's going to aid in the workability time of your paint. Now I've discounted some gesso into my one of those little top tops like I showed you before and um, I'm going to proceed now to put this onto the canvas board. I just got to drop my easel down a touch before I do that. So if um, you can bear with me one second, I'll be back. Okay, sorry about that. My easel is a bit temperamental and sometimes if I pull this lever the wrong way, it falls right down to the floor and makes a mess everywhere. Anyway, so we're going to do this very similar to the, um, I think it's the Sunset Bird, you know, the one I'd done um, with the orange with the bird in the water. So this is going to be like a wet on wet technique. Now, it's quite warm in here this evening, so I'm going to be spraying my canvas panel with um, my Mr. Bottle. Now what, you, what I want you to do is when you put this gesso on don't spread it overly thin. You just need you need to leave this reasonably thick and I mean reasonably thick. Once it starts to drag reapply because this is the thing that a lot of people make mistakes on and that's by not applying this paint, this gesso correctly and they, they apply it too thinly and the the way this works, this particular method works, is the gesso does the main job for you. It's as simple as that. 
Now you, if you know of oil painting and check out Mr. Bob Ross paintings from the 70s and early 80s and you'll see him using um, this type of method with oil paints and, um, and this is basically the same method but we're just using acrylics. So there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pot down and get my Mr. Bottle and I said just a couple of squirts and what I suggest you do once you've done that is always and I mean always just blend that moisture in there you go now I'm gonna for demonstration purposes gonna be using this palette but my paint is as you see on my wet palette next to me on the right hand side but for the purposes of this demonstration I'm gonna be taking it off there onto you and using it that way so hopefully um, if I need to change the colour mixtures I can show you on here so right so I'm going to go straight in um, I'm using the inch brush I'm going straight in I haven't put this brush in any water yet this is just what moisture's in here from the gesso and I've gone straight in with the ultramarine blue and I'm gonna go from the top and I'm gonna work that in in a crisscross motion all the way across and I'm going to work that down and I'm going to use a gesso to blend that in for me and I'm not reapplying any paint I'm just using the paint that's actually on the canvas itself I'm just going to look at the camera and make sure my head's not in the way and down down to the horizon line crisscross manner back up a little bit now if you want you can you can flick it around a little bit like that and you can bring a little bit down there but you need to blend this in and what I'm going to do at this stage I'm going to put my brush straight into the water and I'm going to get one of my um, blending brushes um, now I'm using uh, what well they got the, like the makeup brush that's quite a, a big one okay and then I'm gonna go very lightly across all the paint and I'm gonna blend that in as such a little bit of contamination on the on that blender I don't know why but that's okay yeah, I've got a bit of contamination on that brush so what I'm gonna do I told you before, if you can pick up a, a couple of different blenders, then that's all well and good. And um, I've just sprayed it once more. I'm going to go in with another blending brush I got. I got a little bit of contamination there. But that's okay. And we blend this in as such. paint is getting a bit sticky tight. I don't know what I think. It might be the temperature. See, so I, it's nice to see me struggling sometimes because it just proves that I am a human being and I do make mistakes and, and sometimes the paint doesn't always work for you and because uh, it certainly doesn't always work for me. I'm just spraying it with a bit more moisture because it is quite warm in here this evening and I just want to get this blend nice and I can afford to work with this blend a touch. Just bringing that down here I'm moving back up into the darker area now and as you can see it's developing already some possible emphasize possible cloud formations 
we can play around with that anyway so yes I'm happy with that so I'm going to put that in there I'm going to dry that off with the air dryer now and then we'll see what we can do next time okay so that's, that's all right it's dry enough what I want to do now I've just rinsed um, that one inch brush out I got my blenders soaking in the water I don't leave them in there too long because the water will get into the feddle and loosen the glue <coughs> and then we just remove the masking tape and there we are so we've got a sky already in place with an horizon line below and that's really nice now you can Make, when, when that's completely dry, um, and make, make sure it is dry, you can put another bit of masking tape there and you can have a nice sharp line. So I think we'll do that. I'll just go over this section once more with the air dryer just to make sure that um, it is dry. Now I will stress when using an air dryer... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh dear me. Sorry about that. I will stress when using a canvas panel and a hair dryer it is important that you let this panel dry because I have just found out recently and this shows that I do learn by doing this um, that it can dry your uh, paint quite rapidly if the board is warm so that makes sense so I suggest we leave that to cool off just a second and um, if I can find out where I've just put my masking tape we'll also put some masking tape on there there we are I found my masking tape I put it back where it belongs so, one of the most obvious places sometimes are the most hard to find. So I'm just going to put this masking tape just above that line very, very, very carefully, making sure I follow that line there. And I'm just going to rub that gently. I'm not going to push it all up because I don't want that to stick onto there, in case especially if it's a bit wet. And we use a watercolour pencil, so hopefully now this will work. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did making it and painting it I must add and um, well thank you very much for watching check me out on Facebook you can join me on Twitter don't forget to check those playlists out and I invite you to press the subscribe button if you haven't already done so so thank you very much for watching I'm Clive from Clive's Art and I will see you on the next episode bye bye